Tonight's DJ and TV show is sponsored in part by Electro Voice, DJ Event Planner, ADJ, NLFX Professional, Promo Only, Newmark, and DJ and TV Insiders. Hey everybody, it's Ben Stowe, and you are watching Tuesday Night with Ben Stowe. Uh, kind of a special show tonight. John can't be with us, but fortunately my good friend Chris uh, was in town from uh, True North DJ, representing right there. And uh, he was going to join us tonight anyway, and uh, as I said, John unfortunately couldn't be with us tonight. So we are uh, running around unsupervised, unchaperoned. <laughs> yeah, we... We could have a little fun with this, uh, so uh, I guess, uh, but it's not a live show, so uh, I guess John will edit uh, <laughs> if we have too much fun. He's probably not going to have time to edit. We can probably do it. Right. I think we should. Uh, anyway, tonight we are going to uh, talk a little bit about power conditioning, had a lot of questions about this, talked about it a little bit at Mobile Beat, and that spurred some discussion, and uh, I'm really glad that I've got Chris here uh, to help with your questions, since it's not a live show, we don't have the live chat, and... Uh, that means uh, no pressure, my friend, but you are the voice of the people. So, Oh, boy, no pressure at all. Yeah, your job is to uh, keep me uh, from going off the rails <laughs> here. So, uh, I think one of the most fundamental questions people ask is, what is power conditioning and why do I need it? And uh, without getting into a long and lengthy dissertation about the struggles we have with our power grid, certainly we know that there are things that exist in the power grid that wouldn't be desirable to our very sensitive electronic systems. Uh, Certainly things like, like noise, uh, transients, which would be spikes or surges, sustained overvoltages and undervoltages, uh, and uh, you know all these other undesirable artifacts. Uh, for example, now I'm going to put you on a spot. Have you played a gig in a, in a small bar or something where maybe the beer cooler kicks in and all of a sudden you hear a pop or a click through your system? Yep. Okay, well, there you have it. And by the way, that's a really good indicator uh, of what I'm going to say right now in that most of our problems, most of our noise and the other issues we deal with with power occur within the building that we're doing them in. Uh, they're they're uh, maybe even self-inflicted. They're coming from our system. So that's a, that's one really good such example. And then there's other things that can uh, occur outside the installation, uh, noise and that sort of thing. And uh, I think by and large, if I was to ask you, what does a power conditioner look like? you're going to tell me it's a black box with outlets on it, right? Yep, pretty much. And it's pretty difficult to understand what's inside of them unless you take them apart, which uh, I'm totally good if you want to go take power conditioners apart. I sort of encourage people to do things on their own and, and go out and, and uh, you know do their own experiments and take, take ownership of the science. The science doesn't belong just to us. Uh, you have the opportunity to to do these things on your own and, and take that knowledge uh, and share it with us, please. You know, be, be uh, better as a community. Uh, but I'm going to do that for you tonight. We're going to take some power conditioners apart and uh, we're going to take a look at what some of these uh, circuits do and don't do. And we're going to do a little noise testing. So are you up for that? I am totally up for it. That's good because I locked the door. You're stuck now. So, <laughs> Oh boy. You're in it for the long haul, buddy. <laughs> uh, one of the first examples of power conditioning that I think some people might think of is your basic power strip. All right, uh, and these uh, you know, they'll tell you that they're they're surge strips, or they have uh, some level of power conditioning in them. Um, I'm trying to think of a. My mom said, you know, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything <laughs> at all. So I'm trying to think of something to say. Uh, let's just open one. Uh, I've already done that. In fact, let's just take one I've opened. So here we have our, our power strip, our sacrificial power strip, and uh, we're going to take a look inside this thing. And uh, here's what we've got. And Chris, if you could, would you basically tell us what we've got in here? Uh, you've got some power wires coming into it. Mm -hmm. And uh, looks like a metal strip that goes up here to feed the outlets. Yep. That's about it. That's it. And a switch. And a switch, yeah. There is, uh, which also acts as a circuit breaker, but there is no power conditioning whatsoever in this. Uh, it is doing nothing to improve the quality of the power as it's being delivered. And I think to me that would be the definition of a power conditioner, is it does something 
that improves the power or changes the power, hopefully for the better, mm -hmm. before we utilize it. Uh, and that could be done in a variety of ways. It could be surge suppression, could be uh, noise elimination. Maybe it's a, a transient uh, where uh, there's a device called an MOV, a metal oxide varistor, that basically is a sacrificial device. It, it uh, Typically we find these between hot and neutral and hot and ground, and then sometimes neutral and ground as well to sort of deal with any over voltages. And basically how an MOV works is when enough voltage gets to the MOV, it uh, allows this voltage across the MOV and, and shunts it down to ground and it blows itself up in the process. You know, uh, I don't want to put you in the spot, Chris. Yes, I do, actually. <laughs> I don't mind. That's <laughs> why I'm mind? here. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know if you're much of an electrician or if you know much about electricity, uh, so I don't mean to put you on the spot, but... I know how to get shocked by it. Oh, good. That's what so, I wanted to... Yeah, that's what I wanted to cover. So. I know what not to do. <laughs> okay. So in the list of what not to do would be touching uh, the white wire to the black wire beyond the list of what not to do? Yeah, I would say so. W what would happen if we did that? Um sparks and all kinds of good stuff yeah whammo right yeah and probably same, feel a little sting you know <laughs> especially if you're the one that's connecting <laughs> yeah. them yeah well that's what the mov basically does intentionally is it it shunts that power away from the line conductor which is the black conductor to either ground or the line or the uh, neutral conductor um and and because the sparks and all that basically that mov uh blows up in the process and it dies and hopefully it does so fast enough to protect the equipment uh connected downstream but this doesn't even have movs mm -hmm. so let's look at another basic power conditioner uh that does and we're not gonna do the name game here we're just gonna show you this is another typical uh kind of a black box power conditioner right and we're gonna take a look at what's inside here Okay, and we'll show the people. And um, basically, if we were to describe what's in here, the answer would probably again be wires. Yeah, and switch plugins. And not much. Not much. <laughs> Mostly an empty box. This one does have this little blue disc here, which we see. Uh, maybe you can't. Can you see? Connected between our line and our neutral, and that is our MOV. That's our metal oxide varistor. That is what will blow up and uh, break that circuit and uh, hopefully protect our gear uh, and uh, probably trip our breaker in the process as well. Uh, and then we have a small uh, noise choke in here as well. And so this does, you could, you could call this a power conditioner. You could say it's a power conditioner because it does condition power. However, this manufacturer actually is very honest, and I like this. If we read the front of this box, what does that say? Power distribution. Power distribution. So <clears throat> the manufacturer is acknowledging and being honest about saying this really isn't a power conditioner. It's a power distributor, meaning it takes the power in and distributes it out. <laughs> and it does that with a few tiny little benefits uh, added in. But it's not really a power conditioner. So kudos to this manufacturer for being honest. Mo many of them are not. I'll just say that without saying any names. Uh, now, uh, I am going to say a name because this is some proprietary technology. And these guys have established themselves as an industry leader. Uh, but right after I say something nice about them, I'm going to punch on them pretty good <laughs> here. I'm giving the old what for, right? So This is a Furman Classic Series. And if we look inside this one, uh, we have a lot more going on. A lot more. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in here. Beefy looking stuff. Uh, so let's take a little tour through this. Uh, well, right here we've got a... a you switch hands here. Right here we've got a little transformer that uh, provides power to our LED lights and uh, that sort of thing. We have LED pull-out lights here. Uh, we've got a... Uh, We've got a convenience outlet on the front and that sort of thing. We've got a little uh, light socket on the back here, which is also fed by that transformer. But then here we have this really beefy, meaty conditioning circuit. Uh, and this, you can see, is doing a far better job. Uh, or I guess you just have to trust me. It does a far better job. No, you don't. I'm going to prove it to you. <laughs> I'm going to show you. Uh, of actually conditioning our power. 
Uh, we can see that it's not just an MOV that's sacrificial. This is a non-sacrificial device. It will deal with those transients and over voltages without dying in the process, and it will protect our, our connected gear. Uh, in fact, this one here has a protection OK light, and it also has an extreme voltage light. Uh, and I've had a lot of customers that have run into this, particularly with generators, where uh, something comes loose in the generator, and now all of a sudden we have a voltage that far exceeds what we want for our gear. And it will shut down, protect the gear, and illuminate that light. So you're not you're not just wondering why your gear doesn't mm -hmm. work. It says, it says, hey man, you got a problem here. You might yep. want to check it out. And there are other <clears throat> models uh, that have meters and things in the front here too. This one does not. So right off the get go, we can see that there's a substantial difference in the hardware that's contained in here. Uh, and then we're going to test it in a minute and see if it makes any real difference, which uh, I fully expect it will, or I wouldn't have done the test. So. <laughs> Truth in advertising, right? Absolutely. Um, I do want to point this out, too, because this little gizmo I really dig. And I'm not trying to turn this into a Furman infomercial, but they just make some really great stuff. This is a little two-outlet version that works really well for putting in by uh, maybe a DJ controller, some of these smaller mm -hmm. coffins. You don't have rack mount space and that sort of thing. And we'll notice if we look at these, they have exactly the same protection circuit. It is exactly the same protection in both of these. So that's a pretty cool deal. Uh, so power conditioning should eliminate noise, protect us against uh, sustained over voltages, and protect us against transients or spikes. Uh, any questions so far for the people, Chris? Um, I don't think so off the top of my head yet. All right, I'll keep going. <laughs> Let's uh, get out our little uh, lie detector test. <laughs> With apologies to Maury, I may quote him at least <laughs> once in this. Uh, and I'm going to plug into the power in our little studio here. By the way, we're hanging out at a studio uh, at the NLFX HQ, so having a little fun there. Uh, we'll see how good the power is in our building. So I'm going to just plug into this outlet down here. I would imagine you could hear that. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. So this is amplifying noise that's in the power line. Um, now let's take our uh, let's take our um, power distributor. Power distributor. Yep. Or we could call this a uh, another manufacturer might label this power conditioner, and they'd be stretching the truth a lot. I think is a good way to say it. I think there's probably some truth in the statement but I don't I don't agree with that being called a power conditioner <laughs> so uh, now I'm going to try to do this uh, and not get myself uh, zapped uh, do you know CPR yes okay can you do it without the mouth to mouth preferably not in that case, I'm gonna make sure <laughs> I'm gonna make sure I do not zap myself. No offense. I'm sure you're great at the mouth to mouth. I'm just gonna try not to zap myself. <laughs> Things I do for this show. All right, we're going live here, so plugging it in. Okay. <clears throat> Device is in, the power switch is on. Now I'm gonna plug <clears throat> in my tester. Would you hold that up for everybody? And let's see if we have any difference here. Actually, not too bad. No. Actually, not, not too shabby. Uh, about a thirty, uh, about a about a reduction of thirty here. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing that I should uh, point out is we're running other power conditioners in this uh, studio, and that actually does affect the rest of the things in here. I noticed that the other day, uh, working on something different. So, uh, let's uh, let's get this up to about. Uh, Let's get this up to about, uh, let's go to about 100, like it says, and then let's see what kind of measured difference we get. Uh -huh. Okay. Close enough. Pretty close, yep. All right. So now let's plug this in and let's see what we get. We want to have enough of a scale to measure the difference. All right, 
Light is on, let's plug it in. What do we got? We're down at 8.1. That's really actually pretty good. You know what? Kudos to this manufacturer. That that performed far better than I thought it would. I am actually really quite impressed mm -hmm. uh, with its noise reduction. I will say not all noise is created equal. Uh, and certainly we know this isn't going to handle spikes and surges as well as the right. others. So let's see what the difference is, if any, with the, uh, the ferment here. Uh, I'm kind of curious, but I'm really impressed. Honestly... For a for a company that doesn't call itself a power conditioner, did a pretty good job of mm -hmm. reducing that noise. I'm impressed. Mm -hmm. um, just for fun, let's try let's try this guy, yeah. shall we? Okay, you want to do the honors? Wrapped up in there. This way we can both get zapped at the same time. Okay, so this it's, basically, it's actually worse. <laughs> I think it amplified it. it it's actually worse. <laughs> it's, it's worse. Okay, well, that I swear I didn't change anything. No, I, I, I know you didn't. So, um, well, good. That uh, uh, we, we know we don't want that. All right. Um, let's try this Furman, shall we? Yes. I'm kind of anxious to do this. I'm sure you are as well. <clears throat> Put this up here. See if I can do this without killing myself again. No zaps. All right, we heard that relay click in. That's because this has detected that the voltage is okay and it says protection is okay and the light is lit. Uh, so would you, I gotta be really careful with this ground wire here because if it touches a hot uh, conductor, we're gonna. Yeah. We'll find out what happens when we do. <laughs> So if you don't mind, just go ahead and plug that in. Uh, look at that. Yeah, we're down to basically immeasurable and mm -hmm. inaudible. So as expected, this has done the best job of cleaning up the, uh, the noise. Uh, I will tell you that in other environments, I've seen a more notable difference be between the two. Uh, and and uh, it, I think it probably depends on which one you test and which choke they have. But I've always had really good results with this, and I've always been impressed with that. So I'm not surprised at all by that result. Uh, likewise, uh, we should find a similar result if we uh, test this uh, smaller model. So let's, let's test the smaller model. I'm going to go ahead and plug this in and again do my best to not get uh, lit up and hear that relay click again and we see the protection okay light is on and go ahead and plug in here and exactly almost the, same. the exact same yeah yep. which makes sense because it has exactly the same protection circuitry inside it is exactly the same uh, power conditioner just a different size chassis and has less outlets. And this one, of course, doesn't have any lights on the front. Now, one of the questions people ask me all the time is, if I had something like this, could I use something like the little white surge suppressor that we sent flying? That's what I was just going to ask. I guess I'm going to have to go get it. <laughs> Let me... Oh, what a guy. I'll get it for you. Thank you. What I a need guy. to do something. <laughs> and meanwhile, while you do that, I'll plug this back in. So now, if we plug the... I'm going to try to hold this up so people can see. If you want to go ahead and plug that into the front of this. I'm not too concerned. Can't shake this guy. Nerves of steel. Uh, so now, right. if we uh, plug that into here, you'll notice that it did indeed condition that power. So people mm -hmm. say all the time, can I use the little box and connect another power conditioner into it and uh, and still achieve the power conditioning and the answer is an obvious yes. Uh, now just to prove that there's no trickery, let's just go ahead and unplug this. And let's go ahead and plug this right back into the wall, right down here. You know, if I was smart, I would have put an extension cord from the wall to the bench. We would have wanted to test that too. Yeah. So there you have it. Back up. Yeah. Right back to where it was. Again, actually a higher value than direct to the wall. Yep. 
So, there you have the measured differences. Uh, you can see there is very clear internal differences. That gives you the ability to be a, a smarter, wiser consumer and uh, shop um, a little more uh, smartly with your hard-earned money. Um, and maybe that um, maybe that gives us some questions. So uh, one question that I would have is, which unit would you, or what exactly would you want to make sure you plug into something like this? That's a great question. On a, say on a mobile DJ side. That's a really good question. I think a lot of people <clears throat> ask, should I plug in my speakers? Should I plug in my amplifiers? Uh, people are often concerned with, will it hurt my amplifier? Uh, I've been told I shouldn't do it. I don't agree with that. Um, you certainly could plug in your amplifier. You're not going to hurt it. And uh, a, a good power conditioner, particularly like this classic series, is going to uh, keep up with those power demands uh, for most modern DJ powered speakers and that sort of thing. But I don't think they're necessary. I would be a lot more concerned about things like my, my controller, my mixer, my wireless microphone, things that are operating on very, very tiny amounts of current uh, things that are operating with these very small printed circuit boards, and they're a lot more vulnerable to uh, to noise and certainly to transients. But again, that doesn't mean I wouldn't put my speakers on it, uh, powered speakers or amplifiers, as it were. Uh, but I, th that would be a secondary consideration. I probably would not. Uh, a follow-up question to that is, or follow-up answer to the question you haven't yet asked. Uh, <laughs> so I'll plant the question here. I'm going to put words in your mouth. All right. Is uh, when people get hum um, and you know will these eliminate hum and the answer is probably not because that's probably caused by grounding uh, or a ground loop within the system which these do not address and that's a much more complicated thing but you know what actually I realized I have answers right around the corner so I'll go get that in a second you'll just have to entertain people do a little you know song and dance hum. Sure. Right. <laughs> uh, but maybe to solve that problem I would I would then connect my powered speakers into that same Furman so that all of my devices have the same ground potential so uh, that might be a reason to do that, uh, to you know, run extension cords out to the speakers so everything's coming from the same power source with the, uh, the same ground potential. Uh, so I'm going to run real quick and grab those other devices I just remembered that I have here, which is pretty awesome. And uh, you're on the spot. I guess so. Don't, I didn't say a thing. You didn't say a thing. <laughs> oh, John. I didn't know where to go from there. <laughs> the, the 20 most I awkward seconds what. of Chris's life. So. <laughs> it was longest drink I've ever had. <laughs> you know, I would say there goes our ratings, but we don't have any anyway. So uh, We lost our last viewer because of you. We were down to one, and we lost our last viewer because of you. <laughs> oh, I'm kidding. Uh, so here are some devices that we might use to eliminate um, a hum. And I say might because eliminating that can be challenging. Uh, in fact, a guy by the name of Neil Muncy made a career out of talking about grounding and pin one problems uh, and hum problems. Uh, and we have to solve it where it exists. So it could be a video device that's connected. It could be on the input side. It could be on the output side. It just isn't that simple, uh, but often it can be addressed with one of these devices. So one of our biggest offenders is unbalanced circuits, and this device here allows us to plug in a couple of RCAs or quarter inches or three and a half millimeters, and it has uh, transformers inside, galvanically isolates the signal, and probably solves the problem. Uh, this is a XLR version of the same, really uh, slick and simple. Uh, and by the way, all of these are, well, obviously available from NLFX because mm -hmm. I just stole them from our <laughs> showroom. So, you know, I wonder when the showroom people come in tomorrow and they see the mess we've made and hopefully they don't see our, our corpses laying on the floor <laughs> in these experiments. You know, they're going to, when the world happened in here last night? <laughs> I don't think I'll be allowed back. Uh, you know what? I You're going to blame it on me. I already No, absolutely not. I, you know, I'm, 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 gonna, I'm just, I don't, I'll. I don't know what I'll do, but, you know, I'll use the bully pulpit. You're always welcome here, my friend. You can All come right. anytime. Uh, and this is They'll another... just be mad at you. 
Yeah, that. So what else is new? <laughs> Another day at NLFX. Uh, this device here is very much the same, but it has two XLRs. Uh, actually, we'll just pull it right out of the package, and I will clean up my mess before the show when people get in tomorrow. I promise. <laughs> Would you, would you trust this face? It was rhetorical. You don't need to answer that. Don't worry, I won't. Okay. So this device here, uh, again, just two XLRs. Uh, it does have some cool features uh, like a polarity invert, uh, which could be handy uh, if we've got a cable that's wired backwards or we want to do uh, some fun things. We also have a ground lift switch, which is nice, uh, can help us eliminate hum. So there's a, a two channel XLR version uh, as opposed to the one channel XLR version. Um, so what other questions do you have? What would be some pricing points on these? Mm. Roughly. Better than I can say on this show. All right. uh, so I can say that a good power conditioner can be had for less than 200. A okay. really good power conditioner can be had for less than 200. I just can't say how much less. Okay. You should call me or message me. So another question. Um, so you have these, you know, these larger size and then you have this, this uh, two plug. Mm -hmm. What would you recommend? And is there a real difference if somebody goes from, you know, if they have a rack that they want to, they can either mount in or if they just want to run this small little box with the two and then run our little trusty friend here, mm -hmm. <laughs> what would be recommended? Well, you know, this is coming and John's not here to groan when I say it, but it depends. <laughs> uh, if you have the rack space, I think it's obviously nice to have the rack unit. Uh, and again, there are some more utility features that can be had for this. The rear rack light can be handy. The rack mm -hmm. lights in front can be handy. Uh, of course, off camera, they can't see the PL Plus that's powering this, uh, you know, setup in here. Uh, it's kind of nice that I can look over and I've got my voltage display. Now I've got my amperage draw. Uh, you know, there's various features available there. Uh, but if space is a consideration, then I guess I'd say the, the little one. Um, I, I think it depends. Okay. Again, the conditioning value is the same, so yep. it really depends on what's going to be easier for uh, the person who's using it. Perfect. Um, Got any more questions for me? I'll put you on the spot. <laughs> I know. Anything else we want to plug that little meter into and see what happens? <laughs> we haven't we haven't been zapped yet. And I haven't so. <laughs> been zapped. We haven't done the job yet. What's the worst that could happen? You'd be here tomorrow. On the floor. On the floor. I'd be long gone. <laughs> This is true friendship right here. This 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 is what friends are for. He's gonna tiptoe out the door and like I was never here. What would be a sign if you've been using this for a little bit and you may have to replace it? What would be a sign to look for? Well, I would say um, typically these things are pretty solid over a, over a long period of time. But if you start experiencing uh, you know noise degradation. That's another problem with the ones that use MOVs is they actually can create leakage to ground, which can eventually damage circuits over time. You can actually damage the equipment you're trying to protect. Um, but uh, I don't know if I could tell you exactly what you're going to see first as a problem. Um, you know, I, I don't know if I could say that. Okay. So here's another question. I guess that's a good sign. They don't go bad too often. So That's true. So on one of these rack mountable ones where you actually have uh, many options of plugging things in, mm -hmm. how many things, besides the space that you have, how much could you actually run off of one of these? That's a really to good be question. Safe? So there's two answers to that. One, of course, is the number of receptacles available to you. Uh, and, uh, for example, this one has nine. Uh, I believe this one also has nine. And, of course, the little one has two, but we looked at you know using a power strip for that. Uh, to give us a little bit more in our rack. Uh, probably somewhere a fire marshal is smacking themselves in the head uh, when I say that, but from a protection standpoint, of course, you know, we can see the protection is carried downstream. The biggest issue here is, is amperage. Uh, and uh, this model, for example, here, the full rack mount unit is capable of delivering 15 amps, which is uh, 1800 watts at, at 120 volts. And of course, Ohm's law tells us that changes a mm -hmm. little bit. So 15 amps is our uh, max on that. 
the little one, even though it has the same conditioning circuit, due to a few construction things and, and more UL's certification, because these are UL listed devices, it's only rated for 10 amps. So it only has a 10 amp breaker in it, uh, and uh, that one, of course, be rated at, at uh, 1,200 watts. But there are 20 amp devices as well. Um, something we have to be a little bit careful of when we think about that, though, is this is a 15 amp plug, and a 20 amp plug will have uh, one of these at a horizontal. So it may not fit in a standard 15 amp receptacle. In fact, it's designed not to fit on purpose. So you don't mm -hmm. plug 20 amp devices into 15 amp receptacles. So if you order one of these as a 20 amp version, be prepared for the fact that it's going to come with a 20 amp plug because it is then at that point a 20 amp appliance. But with a 20 amp version, uh, of course, then you would have 2400 watts available to you. Um, and now we can get into some of the minutia and I don't really want to where we talk about derating uh, you know, circuit breakers, uh, you know, 80%, 70% for heat and this and that. Uh, so just for simple math, let's just stick with 15 amps is 15 amps and 20 amps is 20 amps. Okay. Is nothing ever simple with me, right? No, never. <laughs> it just went like this. Uh, well, you can just keep adding <laughs> stuff until, uh, you know, my mom did this at, you know, holidays are great and everybody's, you know, got, gets together, the family and cooking and all that. And my mom has a hard time. And I love my mom. You know, she's my mom, right? But mom has a hard time understanding why you can't run 13 crock pots, a coffee maker and a <laughs> microwave off of one circuit, you know? And I mean, this doesn't take an engineering degree. I walk in the house and I'm like, well, there, there's your problem right there. She's like, I don't know, something wrong with this breaker. It keeps tripping. I'm like, no, there's, no, there's nothing wrong with the breaker. <laughs> Something wrong with, with the cook, you know? But uh, anyway, I just usually stealthily move a few cables to a different circuit and let her think it's a great mystery, I guess. <laughs> uh, any last questions here? I think I'm about ready to wrap up. Uh, um, no, I don't think so. Nothing off the top of my head anyways. Okay. Well, so would you, I guess I would, would you recommend as a must for a mobile DJ or any... Or is it by choice, or what would you recommend for something like well, this? Well, it's always by choice, but I, I think so. I, I'm a fan of having some form of power conditioning. Our our equipment is getting more and more efficient, which mm -hmm. means it's operating on less and less power. Uh, and the circuit boards are getting smaller and smaller, and the space between components is getting smaller and smaller. So I think when you look at, at the value of what we connect to these things and and the importance of them working throughout the night, it's a small price to pay. I, I think, you know, again, we're talking between 100 and 200 bucks. We can't talk about exactly where in that range, but um, it's a really small price to pay to uh, not only protect more valuable equipment, mm -hmm. but also to protect the night, mm -hmm. uh, particularly with the, with the non-sacrificial devices. Devices, uh, you know, like the one that we looked at, uh, the, the bigger protection circuitry inside that are going yep. to take that hit and continue to operate uh, through transients and that sort of thing. Um but it's always a choice. I just, I would have one. I would have one. I, I have one. Uh, and, and I do, you know. Uh, so, I don't know. I think that's probably the answer I'll go with. All right. I think that'll work. <laughs> I'd like to say it's mandatory, you know, but it's not. Uh, like a lot of things. Uh, that being said, viewers, if you have questions, if I didn't answer your question, or if I've given you more questions, which hopefully I have, and I've challenged you to, uh, to think and, and, uh, uh, you know, want to explore deeper into this, uh, do feel free to comment me and message me. A little disclaimer here, uh, please, again, while I encourage you to take the knowledge uh, for yourself and to do your own experiments and do your own tests, please do so safely. Uh, the Minnesota Department of Labor and Industry has given me an electrical license because I've passed some tests and uh, have continued to keep up on continuing education and I understand how electrical circuits work. And it is not advisable to be working around live open parts like this. So I urge extreme caution. Uh, you know, I certainly don't want any of my viewers to, uh, to get hurt by doing something you're not qualified to do. So if you're uncomfortable with that aspect of it, simply don't do it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I don't mind sacrificing myself. <laughs> and as much as I joke about having Chris to rescue me, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty careful. And, <laughs> Thanks. and Thankfully. Yes. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm, you know, I want you to be safe too. I, I you know, obviously I, I know a lot of you personally and I appreciate that you watch and I would certainly feel very, very bad if uh, one of you did something and got injured. So, uh, so, so don't, as they say on TV, don't try this at home. <laughs> um, that being said, Chris, I really appreciate you coming over. It was yeah, really I appreciate good. you having me. 
So, worked out really good. Could you imagine? I mean, obviously, you and I were out to dinner when we found out that John wasn't able to uh, do the mm-hmm. show tonight, uh, and and certainly hope everything uh, works out that that uh, he's got going on right now. Uh, but boy, what a boring monologue this would have been. Me just <laughs> <laughs> staring at the camera and the poor viewers stuck with the product of that. So yeah. many, many, many glad thanks. I, glad I could help you out. <laughs> well, you helped them out more than anything. You know, they they had something else to look at besides me for a little bit. So. Yeah, definitely. With that, viewers, thanks so much for uh, watching. Any last words, Chris? Wanna... Uh, thank you, guys, and go to him if you got any questions about this. He's your guy. Oh, thanks, Chris. Appreciate <laughs> a bunch, and I'll see you uh, in the next DJ Hangout. Sounds good. See you guys later. Bye-bye.